What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. Well today we're talking Caspa and more specifically the Ice River KS2. Now I just got my Ice River KS2 a few weeks ago and I'll be honest, I've really questioned which firmware do I go with? Well in today's video, we're gonna test all five firmwares. So let's dive in. All right. Let's go ahead and dive into some testing. Now I do have a spreadsheet here that I'll link directly down below that'll have all the results for you and you'll be able to see that by the end of this video. And I'm gonna go through and populate this entire thing and then we'll check back in along the way. Now we have five different pieces of firmware we'll be testing. First, the November KS2 firmware, the September KS2 firmware, then we have something a little bit different, especially to me. I know a lot of you guys are heard rumors or people have talked about a free firmware that's out there for the KS2. I think a lot of the other models as well. Uh, there is a, a site out on GitHub. I'm not super familiar with GitHub, so bear with me if I use any wrong terminologies here. But there is a, a repository from a gentleman named Incider Threat and They've actually, he's worked with a few other people on a project here for the KS0, 1, 2, and the KS3L. And it's an overclocking firmware project. And they've actually released several different versions. So if I click here on the KS2, uh, they talk about it on here. Uh, it, it gauges about 2300 to 2600 when it comes down to the firmware, which is badass, especially when you're looking at it traditionally about two terabytes with the KS2. So we're going to test this today. There's actually two different versions out there, a 25 and a 40. So uh, we're going to test both of these today, the watts and also the hash rate. So what's that? Four, four different firmwares there. Finally, our last firmware that we'll be testing is the one from T-Swift, and that is for the KS2. And that's actually paid. All the other ones are entirely free. The paid version is 1500 Caspa. And I got my hands on it. And we're going to go through and test all five of these head to head to see, well, which one's the winner. All right, guys. So it has been actually 22 minutes. I was aiming for about 15, but got caught up with my kids. But 22 minutes in November firmware. This is what came with my KS2. I ordered my November 1st and I received it that last week of November. So if you ordered yours for December and you're waiting, I know how it feels. You guys got to wait though. So hang in there. So 22 minutes in on the November firmware, we're at 2066 for our hash rate. And our Watts is, let's take a look here, 1,224. So if we get that entered into our spreadsheet here, you can see our efficiency is 0.592. And our profitability per day at 10 cent kilowatt hours, that's electricity taken out, is $30.52. The time of this video, give that a quick timestamp here. We are currently on December 7th at about 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. I, I say that because the price of Caspa could change, especially significantly if you're watching this a month from now or two months from now. All right, let's jump in and test out the September firmware. All right, another 15 minutes is up and we've tested our September firmware. So right now it's at 2.1 or 2011 giga hash for the September firmware. If we go ahead and take a look at our watts, our watt is about 1,208. So better watts as of currently right now, a lot lower, which which is not, I mean, you shouldn't say a lot lower, but a little, a little bit lower. Uh, when we jump over to our spreadsheet here, I put everything in, it puts our efficiency up there to 0.6 from that 0.59. So very, very minimal. When we take a look at what our profitability is per day at the 10 cent kilowatt hour, we're at $30.91. So now that we've tested our Ice River firmware, we're now going to go ahead over here and test this Insider Threat firmware. This is a, I don't want to say it's community firmware, but it's a public, a free firmware that's out there. Um, it's been modified by the Insider Threat um, user or project. So this is my PSA warning. This is a third party software um, firmware. I'll talk about this with all the different firmwares that don't come directly from um, Ice River. Same thing goes for the T-Swift software firmware, I guess that we'll be testing out today as well. So just be careful and do your research. This is third party, especially when you're putting this on an investment like your Ice River which is not inexpensive. These are all very expensive, quite an investment for all of us. So first one up we're gonna be testing is the 25. There's one, two different firmwares, one labeled 25, one labeled 40. So let's get to work. Another 15 minutes, another set of results. So to recap, this version that we tested 
was the in-sitter threat. And this was the 25 version. That was the community overclock project version. And this was the one that will 25. We still have to do the 41. So this one here, 2.1 or 2,105 giga hash. Now the watts at the wall was the big difference. 1,542 watts, so significantly more. So what does that mean for our numbers and for our pocket? So if we take a look at our spreadsheet here, there's our 2105, 1542, puts our efficiency to 0.73, which isn't as good. If we jump over to our CASPA per day, we're at 263.63 CASPA. So we've gained significantly more watts, 300-ish, give or take, from the September version of Ice Rivers, but we've actually gone down like a little less than one total CASPA. Uh, what that does for our pocket though, is take a look. We're now at $30 and nine cents a day. So, so far the best firmware from these three is the September batch. Let's now go ahead and try the Insider Threat 40 to see if we get any better results. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in real quick here. I'm in the process of editing, reviewing some of these results a little bit. Noticed a weird little skew between the two results we saw there, the September and also the Insider 25. The big difference there is during that time period, we actually saw a difficulty shift as well as the price of Caspa. So that's why you're seeing, it looks a little wonky there, right? But regardless, take a look at that hash rate. That's what's most important, especially when you're mining Caspa. All right, guys, I'm scratching my head a little bit here on this one. So I actually ran this test twice and got super, super similar results. Check this out. So this is the in-sitter threat. I always have hard time saying that one the insider threat 40 i guess the first one was 25 now this one's 40 um just the numbering or labeling i'm not really sure all the details uh but this one wasn't very good so take a look here our hash rate was 1.7 we're, we're going down um so 1783 giga hash and the watts 1687 watts this one is by far the worst. So when I jump over to my spreadsheet here, there's our 1783, a watt to the wall, 1687. That puts our efficiency up to 0.94. We are such a far away from the Ice River hash rate and efficiency numbers. The CASPA per day is only 223. So we've dropped significantly with this one. And our profitability per day, this is after the 10 cent kilowatt hour electric is taken out. $24.63. So we're like roughly just under $6 a day and a loss here. So I kind of reached out to a few people, um, kind of get some more details on this one because I'm like, and I'll show you guys again. This is when I go over to, this is the insider threat, you know, their repository. Um, and then when I go to KS, you know, they have a, a great write up on everything for, for all their details about this and, and all that types of stuff. And there's good recommendations on wallets, the tangent wallet and different things to use with Amazon and stuff like that. Like, cool. I, I get it. I like it. KS2, you select there. And then when you pick for the KS2, it's, it's saying between 2300 and 2600. Well, we're like almost like eight to 900 giga hash off. And then when I click on files, you know, this is where there's that 24 and 25. So I reached out to a few people, um, found out that this firmware um, and some of the other ones don't perform as well with the November batch. I guess there was some of a nerf. I, I, it, some people are calling it an LHR. I don't know that that's the case. Um, I checked with a few others from a hardware level. They said, I guess the quality of these units is not as high or something with the silicon. I'm not positive, so, so don't hold me to it. If you guys know more, leave it down below. But man, this one, 1.7, that's rough. So last one we have left is the T-Swift. Now this is a paid version. You actually have to pay 1500 Caspa. So if we take a look, 1500 Caspa is about $192 US right now. So you pay $192 us and keep that in mind as we go through these results as you see the results as well because i think that's something you have to decide is is it worth it for you for 192 dollars uh at least within within the caspa now it's a third party firmware so as i said before with the insider threat firmware be careful do your research 
you know, safeguard yourself. Keep this in mind that, you know, uh, could this Voyager warranty with your Ice River if you have a problem? Probably. Um, you know, check with Ice River first, but I assume so. Uh, but you are taking a risk for a reward. That has to do with the Insider threat as well as the T-Swift uh, firmware here. So time to get testing our last one. All right, our last test. And if you stayed till the end of this video, good for you because this one was actually the best. So this is the T-Swift paid firmware. As we talked about, it's about 15 100 CASPA, about $192 at the time of filming this. And you can absolutely tell in the upper left hand corner, it's got T Swift's, I don't know, his Discord port, uh, profile. Hopefully for him, that's him. I doubt it, but uh, you definitely know you're on that firmware. So let's talk numbers. Hash rate, the best so far, 2.5 or 2,573 giga hash. Now, that hash rate's great, but it's really gonna come into factor on like how many watts, right? Well, let's take a look. So the watts was 1,759. So what do you think? Just a guess now where we're gonna be at. Well, let's jump over to our spreadsheet and take a look. So 2,573, our, our watts are 1,759. So it puts our efficiency number a lot lower. We're right between, you know, two of these right now to 0.68 when you're looking at efficiencies, but Casper is very different than something like Bitcoin. And here's how. The hash rate is so valuable. Let's take a look over here. Our Casper per day, 322 Casper, just significantly more than anything we've tested so far today. And our profitability per day, it reflects exactly the same. $37.08 profit after, of course, the 10 cents of uh, kilowatt hour electric is taken out. So that's a massive, massive distance between all of our, I mean, where we're the lowest of the low, $24.63, up to the highest of the high, $37.08. This is awesome. I mean, it, it proves out here that like, you really need to do your testing and you need to look at all factors, including your hash rate, your watts. Um, and then finally, you know, what is that CASPA per day? And your results are really going to change. I mean, right now, CASPA is like, what, 12 cents or something like that. So based off of where CASPA will be tomorrow or whenever you guys watch this in the future, a lot of these things will come into factor. But at the end of the day, the amount of CASPA that you're going to earn per day is really going to come down to that hash rate. And I'll be honest, I can crown a victor out of all of these five different firmwares out there. It's the T-Swift one. Now, is it worth the $1,500? Or should I say, wrong, $1,500 CASPA, $192. $1,500 would be a lot. Um, personally, for me, yes, it absolutely was $1,500 worth. Wow, I'm talking tonight. We're good. 1500 cash, but it absolutely is worth it. Um, I, I would say so, especially because of the price difference. When you're looking at the amount of dollars per day of that $37.08, you're definitely going to make back that $192 very, very quickly. Now, what I did do is I linked all of the firmware off to the far right-hand side of this document. I will put a link to it down below so you guys can easily do your own testing or if you're like, Hobbies did the testing for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that one. You can absolutely do it here. The one for T-Swift is a Telegram channel. It's not a website that you download it from or anything like that. It's a Telegram channel. And let me explain more. So I've always kind of shied away from Telegram until about the last year when more and more of these manufacturers and vendors and everything have been using Telegram. And now I use it almost every single day. The T-Swift telegram link that you guys will take you to is to the t-swift mining telegram group and that's where you can message him directly if you're interested to get a quote for uh not only something like a ks2 but also you could purchase the ks2 overclocking firmware now if you're a little more comfortable with discord i get it 100 if you join my discord channel and you do at t-swift there's only one of them in my channel you can go ahead and talk to him directly if you're even in question uh, about getting this firmware, hit me up. Let's talk about it. I'll make sure you get connected with the right person, but I'm going to go ahead and continue to run my KS2 on this firmware because at the end of the day, the amount of money and the difference between the different firmwares is significant enough for me. Well, 
Let me know your feedback down below, guys. As I said, this testing is not rocket science. I mean, this is just me in my basement testing it out and throwing out the results out there. There's probably a lot of things that you could factor into this, but do your own testing is the last thing I can recommend. And finally, the warning of be careful downloading these third-party firmwares, be careful on these websites you're going to, who you're sending, all that sending Casper to or sending funds to, Always be extra cautious, especially within cryptocurrency. Well, guys, that's going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and click that bell, and I'll see you guys next time.